Hey everybody, who gets started? My name is Jim Blanger, patrons like Aga Comics, Black Stitchy, Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kyle Den, Nestor Flores, Rogue Robin, Shiny P, Soda Sun, Over 2 Fair, and Video Gear Survive. And if you like what we do and want to see us do more, you can consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early, and lots of other goodies that really helps us out. Thanks for your support, everybody. Hello, everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is time, once again, to talk about Star Wars Legion by Fantasy Flight Games. So, this is going to be a big, long episode. I'm going to warn you now. I obviously don't know how long it is because I'm saying this in the past before the video was made. I suppose I could go back and edit in however long it is, but I won't because that would take more time that I don't need because this video is going to be long. I'm warning you. It's going to be long right now because there's a lot of stuff to talk about. So, uh, basically, everybody's in lockdown because of COVID and stuff, um, even though some of the uh, people on the internet, on the FFG forums, have shown themselves to be inveterate, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, entitled little snots, because they're like, but why are you delaying the product? Why can't you not ship it to me? Uh, it's because in the U.S. we're in an uneven state of lockdown. Many, many states are shelter in place. I believe even FFG's on Minnesota is doing something similar. Um, so there's not necessarily an even distribution of stores, warehouses, delivery services, etc. that are open to evenly distribute the product, so they're doing the smart thing and just delaying it for everybody rather than be like, well, if you're in, like, flyover country where there's only a handful of uh, cases isolated in your big cities, you know, you're fine because your government hasn't freaked out, but if you're one of those West Coast, you know, uh, states, you're pretty fucked. But that's one announcement that's technically news. Yeah, they're delaying everything, so keep that in mind as we discuss future release potential and whatnot. Uh, but because of that, and because they have to work from home and whatnot, uh, there have been a couple of convenient reveals to kind of get some stuff out of the way that should have been revealed on streams or other stuff, convention panels, you know, namely Adepticon. That's why this video is going to be called something like Adepticon Reveals, even though there's no Adepticon. I don't know. I'll work on the branding later. So uh, we'll talk about it at the end, but first they revealed to some members of the Legion community the contents of Vital Assets. So, you know, got that kind of out of the way. So we uh, will take a crack at what, what's in those battle cards later. Uh, but more importantly, like I said, they held a big stream to do basically what their Adepticon panel would have been, which included some announcements for Legion. Now, obviously, these announcements were not new, new news because of the French leaks and spoilers and stuff. So, uh, it did confirm and fill out the ranks. It's, uh, Clan Ren, Inferno Squad, Republic ATRT, and Stap Riders. I think the only thing that we hadn't seen a hard box confirmation on was Stap Riders, because the Spaniards actually accidentally leaked the ATRT box for clones. <clears throat> Also, in case you don't listen to our other content, I'm just telling you, I don't have the COVID. I'm just having a little a little blurgula in my breathing. It's because it's a bad allergy season. There is no reasonable way I would have caught the plague. And, like, I don't have a fever or anything. I just... <clears throat> As you may have heard from earlier videos, sometimes I just have to clear my throat a bunch when I start my day. And uh, I overslept a little, so I'm a little behind schedule on this video. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about the four new announcement... Um, Units as much as we can, ATRT Stap, Mando's Inferno Squad, various upgrades and stuff. We're going to talk about the assets cards, and then we're going to get out of here. All right? Okay, let's not delay anybody any further. Let's jump into the units. I'm sure there's more news and whatever stuff I can talk about, but let's not. Let's go. Go, go, Gadget, ATRT. So, first up, we're talking about the ATRT. Now, we're doing them in this order because these guys actually have unit cards. They have not shown the core unit card for uh, Mandalorian Resistance or Imperial Special Forces as of this recording. So, I think we could get the whole comprehensive. And honestly, these units are pretty straightforward. So, the ATRT for the Republic, with slight coloring differences, uh, it's, oddly enough, basically the same, though slightly different uh, surge charts and stuff. So, you're looking at base cost 65, uh, which is 10 more, but, uh, and it's the same wounds and resiliency, same defense die. Um, they decided to go, I guess, with the, the ARF troopers being lighter armored. That's okay. I was wondering if they would or not, but I think this, this system works slightly differently. So, for 10 more points over the Rebel version, you get, you lose Surge to crit, but keep Surge to hit, but you gain Surge to block, which is pretty important. Um, well, I know a lot of people complain about how the ATRT can be really fragile because, um, while armor is good, there's still a lot of impact and critical rattling around, so the fact that you're a away with no defensive surge kind of hurts. You still have armor, you still have climbing vehicle, you still have expert climber, so the ATRT can uh, do vertical movement. It does not suffer wounds for clambering. 
and it gains uh, Scout 1. So uh, this fits the, Repu- the Republic theme very well of early mobility. When you deploy, you do a speed 1 move. This means you can start to move these guys into position and move on. Uh, they still have the Grappling Claws for 3 red uh, with Impact 1. And now, uh, instead of a Bog Standard Blaster Rifle, the ARF Trooper riding this thing has a, uh, what is it, RPC-2 Rocket Launcher. Which I don't think that name has been used before, but anyway, they got a Rocket Launcher. Um, I guess. It looks it looks a little bit more like a Grenade Launcher, but whatever. Um, it's Micro Rockets. It's range 1 to 3 still, so no minimum range. Um, but no range four, but it's black, white, white with critical one, impact one. So uh, this means versus vehicles, these guys are going to be pretty reliable, just doing their default attack. Um, so it's entirely possible you may want to run them just naked, basically, and use their scout and their ability to, you know, hop up terrain to get advantages and still fire at your normal range, basically. Because uh, crit one, impact one isn't awful against light and the armor. But they still do have the hard point and the comm slot. And it was stated on stream that the hard points will be identical. This vehicle is literally identical. It's called ATRT. So the Rebel cards are cross compatible because they're not restricted. So the hard points are going to be the exact same. Um, and presumably, since they are still the exact same, they're going to have the same uh, costs that are adjusted and whatnot. So that means you can get the Rotary Blaster for a range 1 to 3, 5, five black. You can get the flamethrower for two black spray, blast, etc. And you can get the laser cannon, which is red, black, black, impact three, range two to four. Uh, honestly, depending on what you're doing, you know, this is a pretty flexible unit for rebels. It'll fill the same roles for clones. Um, because you have scout one and some of that, you know, kind of skadoodling your mobility stuff going on, you may be more comfortable with, say, trying to use certain deployments with flamers and scout one to just scooch into range and try and go first, um, you will also potentially, you know, double down on that armor hunting f- with the laser cannon and that range four. Uh, you could do the rotary. I think, honestly, the loss of surge, surge crit um, means that since black dice are already pretty good, you aren't necessarily going to go that route where you're going to be like, because you do that with an ATRT to fish for crits because you've got surge crit. Um, on the plus side, your defense is slightly better, and you do get scout. Overall, I think it's a good addition to the Republic Army. Um, Like I said, if nothing else, the fact that they've got a built-in rocket launcher with crit one, impact one, you know, three dice with surges. So you'll get, if you get surges on those dice, you'll get a flip to at least one critical and all others will roll over to to hits. And impact can turn those hits into crits for armor. So you're hopefully, it's only got two, it's got two white dice in there, but... um, you may be able to pass aim tokens through some other means. Uh, they do not, unfortunately, have any vehicle upgrades or anything that let them do that. Uh, they really should release a comms upgrade for clones, much like they've released a couple upgrades for droids that let them do stuff. We'll see if they do, actually. I don't know. There is another droid support upgrade um, in here. But still, there's some interesting methods that could be done. Uh, but overall, I think it's a good unit for clones, like I said. Uh, if nothing else, that cheap access to crit impact, well, relatively cheap, um, still got you six wounds. It's got armor and it's got a defensive surge now. They can be fairly resilient. Um, people do not like barks particularly. I'm not exactly sure why off the top of my head. I don't really use them just because they're not my style. But um, people generally don't like them. This, I think, will fit a little bit better in terms of flexibility and support options. And like I said, the fact that you could theoretically run them naked and still have a fairly decent attack pool as like a slight tank hunter or harasser unit. Um, or... You know, just get in there with Scout 1 and Flamers. Uh, got a lot of uses. Um, flamethrowers in general are good for every faction to have in case you want to consider building to counter droids. I've talked about this a lot before. Um, droids have higher body count and they care less about the units they lose. So um, the ability to do big globs of damage um, to them, which in the case of a Flamer is literally roll enough dice to take care of the entire unit. That's the kind of stuff... You- you want to throw against those boys. All right, I think that's everything about the clone ATRT. We need to keep moving swiftly. All right, let's talk about Stap Riders. So these are probably the most mysterious, just because we didn't get a box leak or something. Um, sorry if this version of the image is a little blurry. There are better ones out there in the internet, but this is the one I got. Not really sure why. Uh, but there's 73 points. They're a support unit. They come with two. 
So these are obviously the rough equivalent to speeder bikes for separatists, you know, uh, specifically 744Z speeder bikes. So they are two, they have three wounds, they have a white defense, they are speed three. Now, fitting droids, they have no surge conversions, uh, but they're only 73 points base, whereas uh, the original flat cost of a speeder bike was 90. Uh, is that changed right now? It might be changed. Sorry, I'm, I've am i got a lot of stuff to go to. I can't stop every five seconds to cross-fact check myself on everything. I don't remember what speeder bikes are because nobody uses speeder bikes. But anyway, I, I don't know if they've been cost-adjusted down or not. Uh, Snap riders is what we're focused on. So, they are, in fact, speed three. They don't have any surge conversions whatsoever. They're fragile. They only have three wounds. Sucks for them. Now, they do have the typical, you know, speeder bike type thing, repulsor vehicle. They have cover cover one, so they always have low cover, and if you give them low cover, they can go all the way to heavy cover. They have speeder one, so they get to they have to make a forced move, or in some cases get to make, um, and they can ignore terrain that is height one or lower. Fairly mobile. But also, like our friends, the Tauntauns, they have Agile 1 by default, so they gain a dodge token after a standard move, which I believe compulsory moves count as. Um, so they get basically a dodge token every round. Now, um, the special things, as you might expect from being CAS, they do have AI move. So um, if they, unless they have a fa- face-up order token, they must move. This means they have to double move because of speeder and then AI move. So you want to make sure these guys are getting orders. It's very important. But you may want to do that anyway because they have coordinate droid trooper and vehicle. It's droid trooper combo vehicle. So um, after you issue an order to this unit, you may issue an order to another friendly droid trooper or vehicle unit at range 1. So uh, staps go in your coordinate spree. They're not like uh, not like B2s where they have to be an ender. They can be part of your uh, order chain. Uh, I believe technically they have to start uh, because there's nobody else with coordinate to vehicle, but you can order a snap rider, coordinate to another snap rider, coordinate to a droid trooper, do your daisy chaining kind of a thing. Um, this means they fit very well in the order of battle, I think. Uh, now, obviously, you got to be careful about that if you're trying to use them to coordinate your troopers because they have to do compulsory moves and stuff. Um, but if you're just using a squad of, like, staff riders spaced out, you could always do the trick of, like, hey, one guy in the back, okay, you coordinate the guy in front of you, he coordinates the guy in front of you, everybody's got orders. And that's basically what they got going on. Now, they do have weapons. They are range 1 to 3, they're fixed front. These are repeating dual blaster cannons, they have 3 black and are critical 1. So they technically kind of sort of have 1 surge on 3 dice. Now, this does mean by default, you're rolling... Uh, six black crit two is how that works. Um, that can be pretty nasty, but they are droids with only three health per, three health per mini and white defense dice only. Um, now obviously cover can help with that, agile can help with that, but they don't have outmaneuver. So if you are dumb enough to stumble into an enemy's anti vehicle line, whether that's uh, well, so I say anti vehicle, but generally anti shenanigans, right? Uh, critical especially, you're going to get blasted. Um, critical especially is a keyword that is bad for you as a stat rider to face because that gets around both your dodge token and your cover, and then you're just counting on wa- rolling paint on a white dice, which is not great. Um, and you really don't want to go down a unit because then that's going to have your offensive potential. You're only going to get critical one, and you're only going to do max three damage. Um, but still, 73 points, they're pretty decent. They're, ch- they're cheaper than Droidicas. Um, and I think they will probably... Because, let's see, what are the all the keywords on a droidica? I know I said I wouldn't double check, but I'm making a direct comparison. So droidicas are two. They have the same wounds. They have surge to block on white dice. And they have shields. So they get shielded four with generator one. So they have four extra health per mini. Or four extra health total. That's right, it's on the unit card. I'm being dumb. Um, and wheel mode, they can get up to cover two. So they, get to, they can only go a max of speed two, but when they're doing that speed, they can do... Yeah, but they're 100 points, yeah. So their weapon is better because it's suppressive and immune to deflect and has a red die in there, but it doesn't have any critical, Um, which means that in general... uh, So basically comparing the two directly because these are your two support options as separatists right now. Stap Riders, more fragile. Um, A dodge token can be kind of like a... can be kind of like 
a shield token, um, but you have to activate and actually move first to get it, because it's agile-based, um, and it can be critted. Shield tokens can block crits, too. So, and you can only get cover a maximum of cover one right now, as opposed to droidicas who get all the way up to cover two. Um, but you are speed three, so these are slightly more fragile. Um, their offense is worse, except if you're facing stuff like armor, heavy cover, dodge tokens, etc., um, because droidicas don't have offensive surges, and they have no modifiers on those. Um, they don't have immune deflect, though, so they're not better against Jedis, and they don't have suppressive, so they're not necessarily going to be doing that, but again, these, they're slightly better at hunting heavier, uh, units with heavy defenses. And they're faster, obviously. And they're cheaper at base. So, um, I know that while people like Druidicas, they are still a little pricey and they aren't necessarily as mobile as you'd like. I think you will see a fair number of Stap Riders uh, on the field because they are faster and probably a little more easy to think about because you don't have to do the whole, oh, do I wheel mode or do I not wheel mode thing? You just scoot, scoot and shoot. Um, and they can be a pretty significant flanker unit and you got to be careful because they will, they are well suited to head hunting, um, or should I say tank hunting. Uh, vehicles. So, for instance, say you've got your shiny pants saber tank, right? Now, sure, uh, you have outmaneuver. You can spend uh, dodges on criticals, but that requires you to have a dodge token, which you may not have, depending on your setup. Um, and you have a lot of weak point area. So, these guys could easily tuck into your sides and get crit 2 impact 1 with 6 dice. Um, that means you're going to take some wounds at least. You know, and maybe you can take them down because they're pretty fragile, but they are they might be able to, you know, scoot around you. Um, they're repulsor vehicles, so they pass over terrain easier, and they move through units easier. So they're pretty good as, as lightweight flankers, but as always, they are still fundamentally basically an extension of your B1 ethos, um, especially with Coordinate and their AI. So don't be dumb with them, Separatist players. Be careful about your flankers. All right, let's talk about the one upgrade that comes with these things. So this is the revealed upgrade we've got for Stap Riders. I believe it was in the, whatchamacallit, the actual announcement article. Command Control Array, this is a comms upgrade. It costs two points. It's vehicle only. When you coordinate, you can issue an order at range one to two instead of range one. Pretty typical. This is the same as some other stuff you can get, um, but for vehicles. I guess that's what. There's another thing that affects your coordinate range that I don't remember. It's, um... Is that one of the droids? Anyway, um, it's pretty cheap. Now, for right now, it's only useful on droids because I think that's the they're the only ones who can get coordinate on a vehicle. Um, you can it's by default on Stap Riders, or if you buy the OOM series pilot droid for your AAT, you can um, uh, put that on and you can actually coordinate that way to droid troopers. So this increases your coordinate bubble. Um, not the worst effect for two points, but gonna be very situational. I think for Stap Riders, it's a pretty good idea. That takes you to a nice round 75 points. That's your only upgrade slot. It's very, very cheap compared to, say, something like, you know, HQ Uplink or whatever. Um, and it means that you can um, very much could control your, your, your spacing and your range better, right? Like, if you're going to do a couple of Stap units and have them coordinate each other so you can extend your command range... You're gonna want to worry about your pacing if you your spacing if you have to be range one. This help gives you some better wiggle room. Um, will it be in future factions? I don't know. It's not faction locked, but coordinate is very much a a very heavily leaning of the separatist alliance. We will see if future units um, in other groups get it. Well, we will we will really have to see what else we can do uh, about it. Um. And that requires more vehicle space to come out. So there's not any more coming, forthcoming for now. Um, like, if there was a way to get coordinate on an ATRT, sure, but you can't, so... Eh. Whatever. It exists. All right, let's talk about some meaty stuff going on here. Uh, but also a lot of speculation. So, uh, this slide is basically dedicated to the full announcement of Clan Ren slash Mandalorian Resistance. So, the expansion pack is called Clan Ren... But the base unit is obviously Mandalorian Resistance, and as we can see from Tristan, um, whatever transforms you into Clan Ren, I don't think takes place at the unit card prospect, because then you couldn't put Tristan Ren on it. So, um, I'm not sure exactly how it works, they haven't shown those cards, but I'm guessing there's an alternate unit card or some kind of upgrade card thing uh, that basically 
transforms you into the Clan Ren specifically. So if you're Clan Ren, you um, are paired with Sabine and have to be paired. So it'll probably be like a detachment or like a, another kind of thing where it's like you have to... Sabine has to be present. Otherwise, you can just use a generic Mandalorian resistance unit who will presumably have different stat lines slightly or different keywords or something. Uh, and maybe, who knows, maybe they get like a free connection to Sabine. So, here's the thing. We have no unit cards whatsoever. We have no idea what they're doing. Um, we know, we can guess based on the fact that Tristan is a two wound unit, that the base wounds for this, for this unit is one. Um, otherwise they wouldn't have to specify that he upgrades to two, right? So, other than that, no idea. Um, now, presuming they're gonna be similar to Sabine, they are probably going to have, um, because they come with flight, flight stands and optional jetpacks, we're going to presume they're probably going to be jump 2 by default, a jump infantry trooper. We can presume they're going to be red dice with surge with impervious. Um, so they are going to be a very tough unit, which is probably why they are quite so expensive. You know, a lot of people are like, oh man, Tristan's not as cool as Gideon Hask. Why is he the same cost? Probably because he's red, red surge with impervious, guys. At the very least, red with impervious, possibly with surge, right? Like, those two wounds are going to be chunky especially for Rebels. Um, also, I think that the comparison that should be made between Gideon is not between Tristan, but between a unit card we haven't seen, uh, based on what Gideon does. Other than that, eh, I have no idea. I, I really have no idea. I don't know what their surges are. They will hopefully have surge hits, or even surge crits like Sabine, but I just don't know. Um, they look like their primary weapon is pistols. We'll have to see if they do a rainbow, or if they're like black-white or red-white or something. We can't really guess on that. They're presumably going to be like arc troopers, though, and be range 1 to 2 by default. Um, but uh, obviously with jump giving them some ability to maneuver at longer ranges. And hey, also, they have jetpack rockets. So for 8 points, let's just jump into that part. Um, you can get jetpack rockets, which are blast and impact 1. Uh, they're Mandalorian resistance only. They're an armor and upgrade. They are range 3 to 4, 1 red die, and it's... Uh, it's an extra weapon, so it's per unit. So assuming that these guys are four guys base, I believe is the is the best guess, because we've got Tristan up there. So there's four non non heavy weapon minis. So that's four to five reds, um, with impact to one. So that's uh, much like impact grenades. That's going to be a shitload of impact, uh, with blast. So this will chew up vehicles, but it has the new X symbol. It was previously only seen in the supply deck, um. After you use them, these are gone. They do not come back. You only get one spicy Mandalorian boy shot at range 3 to 4. However, for 8 points, impact 4 to 5 with red dice, possibly with surges and blast, that is a very spicy opportunity. Um, that is going to make these guys scary, scary tank hunters. Um, you know, that's that's going to eat an entire ATRT probably. You know, well, maybe not. I think you'd have to get another extra dice in there somewhere. But like these, these can come close to deleting an ATRT or other many, many milder vehicle units, um, and we'll put a big chunk of damage on them. Or you can use them to erase B two units because they have armor. You can trigger, you can, you can trigger the impact ability to just throw a bunch of crits at them. Um, and in general, it's really nasty. Um, I think you're going to see this on them a lot because um, it's range three to four, and because you've got jump, you can probably coordinate that pretty good. Get yourself some time and distance. So we know what their generic heavy weapon is. It's the Beskad Duelist. Uh, that's pretty sick. One, this mini looks pr really fun. This fucking Mando with his his iron saber doing the fucking come here gesture from Matrix. Um, that's only 28 points. It gives you a melee attack that's red red. These guys are probably only black dice uh, for melee. They'll probably have Sabine's combat expertise for two blacks. So two reds, not bad. Um, and... What you get is you gain the keyword Duelist. This is a new keyword. It basically has two effects. One, if while performing a melee attack, you spend an aim token, you get Pierce 1. If defending against a melee attack, if you spend a dodge token, you gain immunity to Pierce. So, um, if you have a dodge token, which you're rebels, you can probably very easily have dodge tokens. These guys can get immune to Pierce for melee attacks. Now, obviously, these guys are probably already impervious, so that's kind of a... It's a bit like Sabine with the... Um, what am I talking about? The, uh, the Darksaber? So it kind of, you know, um, Im Immune Pierce and Validates Impervious. But keep in mind, that's only for melee attacks. So that's only if you're using these guys as melee blockers to gum up a Jedi. Which, with Jump, and with presumably a pretty fierce um, ability on there, they've got that. 
Um, though the duelist ability kind of belays that because that still only gives you pierce one. But hey, uh, pierce melee attacks. Um, it's much cheaper than Tristan. I think you'll probably see a few of these guys depending on what you're doing with them. Um, a lot of people are immediately like, Wookiees are crying. And they may be. Uh, but the best guy duelist is a pretty decent unit. And then we can see Tristan Ren. So Tristan is a two wound mini. Um, he has a two black rifle. Looks like a boxy Westar rifle. It's range one to three. Um, so he's got lethal, which is basically the same version as, the same effect as Duelist's offensive attack. When attacking, spend one aim token to get pierce one. Um, and you get suppressive after performing an attack, the defender gains one suppression token. He's range one to three. So, for 38 points, he seems a little expensive. At two wounds, he's obviously very durable. Um, and you shouldn't knock the ability to get lethal, like throw in some pierce. And I know some people were like, wait, is it lethal for crappier old guns? I mean, he's got a rifle though. Like, sure, he's got an, it's, this is basically an, an assault rifle with lethal one, mind you, not a sniper rifle. Um, that complaint is probably more focused on, uh, Dell, but that's probably a balancing thing, rather than just give him straight up Pierce 1. Uh, also because Dell can be equipped to different places. We'll talk about that when we get to Imperial Special Forces. But, um, the, the option for Pierce, if you can have it, and suppressive, um, not awful, depending on what their default range attack is, that can definitely be a thing. Uh, I mean, it's only two, it's only two black dice, and it's only range three. I don't really like it as, like, a sniper build. Um, again, comparing to Dell. But, it could have its uses. It probably, presumably, expands your attack range a little bit. And the suppressive is something that rebels aren't crawling with. They only have a couple of sources. So just getting a couple extra black dice and a suppressive on your ranged attacks on a very durable unit. Probably not the worst, but we're gonna have to see what your core stats are, whether those, like, two, two wounds are worth it. Um, overall, pretty jazz. The minis look pretty good. They got the flight stands. Um, like I said, they're probably red with impervious, possibly surge. So they're going to be very tanky for rebels. Um, and in this case, I'm kind of glad that they, uh, they did do a generic. If only so that those people can be like, well, I'm running three Mandalorian resistance now until the end of time. Because you can finally get your red surge. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you'll actually do that because that'll probably eat into your activation count with, uh, you know, sniper strike teams, but definitely I can see one or two of these cropping up on a lot of rebel lists now, just so you can get that mobility and that resiliency. So let's talk about the other specially for CDU announcement. So the other thing is the Inferno Squad pack slash Imperial Special Forces. Okay, so first off, some people are complaining. Um, the thing to remember is that yes, it is a little bit, but I'm going to guess that they couldn't get anything else through licensing, and the important thing is that normally um, they don't refer to ranks as the rank name. They use the rank symbol. So Special Forces is denoted by the blah, blah, blah. All right? So, a little confusing, but yeah. Sorry, I yawned. Um, we're, this is presumably the same thing. You can run Inferno Squad with Aiden, or you can run generic Special Forces guys. We are presuming that they have red, no surge, like Aiden, even though they're wearing pilot jumpsuits. Don't ask me how. Um... Other than that, no idea whatsoever about what they might be doing. Um, they might be nimble. Who knows? Uh, they don't have any other special abilities, probably inherently. Because um, most of Aiden's other stuff is kind of unique to her. What we do have, though, is we have a look at all three of their heavy weapon options. So the generic is the T-21 Special Forces Trooper. So it's a T-21. You get four white at range one to three with crit two. Depending on whether or not these guys get surges... Um, that can be a pretty robust option, and maybe your default when taking these guys, depending on what you're doing, because of the special thing you can do with Hask and Delmico. Right? So, still, I mean, crit twos aren't bad, especially depending on your core unit. Um, the primary problem is that it's, much like people notice with Z6 troopers, it's not range four. Um, though, on, on average, crit two is better at punching through harder defenses, including not just armor, but, you know, cover dodges, etc. Um, only 29 points. A fairly decent setup, I think. We'll have to see what the core unit is before we can shake it out. So we've got two special boys. Um, we've got Delmico, who's 38 points also. They're all 38 points. Or the, or the two of them are 38 points. I wonder if that means that Ursa will also be 38 points. We'll have to see. Um, he's got he's got two wounds, first of all. He's got range 1 to 5 with two black, because he's got a sniper rifle. He's got his own DLT. Um, he has high velocity. He only has lethal 1. And, but he does have repair to capacity one. So basically, he can repair one time. 
to repair up to two wounds or recover two troopers from a droid unit. Now that I think, um, mathematically, depending on how that works, you could maybe do that to revive Dio, but I don't think it, I don't think it matters. Anyway, um, he can do vehicle support, which is cool. He's got range one to five, two black, so he's got a sniper. It's two it's two black. It's got high velocity in it, which is going to be pretty common with that range pool, and it can have pierce one if you've got an aim token. Which, hey, guess what? Your empire. That's not hard. Now. The important thing to note about Dell is he can be attached not only to Imperial Special Forces, but any Imperial Corps trooper unit. What? I tell you, what? Uh, yeah, so, again, this is why I say you might actually, if you're using Inferno Squad, you might actually end up with some generic T-21 troopers, because you might want to stick Del Mico on some guys. Um, so he can, he can attach to any basic infantry unit in the Empire. Stormies, Snows, Shores. Um, a lot of people are saying if you are using Dell, sh- uh, Snow Troopers is the way to go because if they're steady, they're only speed one, but he's range one to five, so you can double move and then shoot, or possibly aim move shoot and then get leaf- lethal high velocity because he's got a lot of range. Um, also because they're slower, they can hang out with um, slower things like vehicles. You know, some of the Empire's vehicles are a little bit heavy, a little hard hard to move, so he can still he can still shoot when he's not doing a healing turn and provide base support. Obviously, he's a little expensive for that, but he's a he's a two unit guy, so he's he's not going to be going down for a while. Pretty gnarly. Um, this is a very interesting effect, and I'm glad to see it with um with Empire. It's got some very interesting things they're doing to kind of stick these guys into any unit. Well, presu- presumably, this is going to be how um uh how Fives and Echo work for Arc Troopers because we haven't seen those cards yet. And then we've got Gideon Hask, Angry Man himself. Um, he's also 38 points. He's also two wounds. He's got a range. Uh, one to three, two reds. No idea why. Is that supposed to be the generic repeater? It sure looks like he's he might have a repeater on there, but he might also just be having an E5. I don't know why he's two red dice, but he's two red dice. Um, oh, uh, and I'll say, the reason why these guys are probably uh, attached to any special, any core unit, um, Amanda's are not one, doesn't make thematic sense to just stick even, even Ursa and Tristan with any old rubble unit. Also, two, huge downgrade, because, here's the thing, most Empire units are red, no surge. Um, presuming that Inferno Squad is the same, you're not really losing anything defensively. If Mandos are red impervious, possibly with Surges, that's going to be a huge downgrade to go to White Surge, no impervious. Like, you wouldn't want to do that. So, um, but Hask, uh, doesn't have any special weapon keywords, but one, uh, he does increase your courage. Now, we've talked about why this is very important. Um, you know, Imperial, uh, commanders are kind of middling on their courage levels. Um, if they have high cards, they need to be very expensive unless you're Aiden. And uh, we're going to talk about War Weary later, which, hey, guess what? If you're an Imperial Army with low courage values, War Weary is going to suck for you. So this can kind of add a little bit of buffer. Um, and he does have a very potent weapon out of it. He also gets leader, so he becomes the unit leader. They're going to have to do some RRG on that because the officer slot is uh, personnel, and this guy is heavy weapon. I'm going to guess you get to choose which one is leader. Or it's just going to be you can't equip two minis that are leaders to prevent um, giving you Courage 3. And you gain Coordinate Core Trooper. So any trooper, any unit that is a trooper and a core, you can coordinate to them. Cool. Um, so Gideon. Uh, first of all, people are like, stay on Shores so he could double coordinate. Sorry, I yawned again. Uh, assuming that is how that works, we don't know. They might FAQ that if you have two different instances of the coordinate, you can't. Um, otherwise... He's just a really strong unit, I think. With two wounds um, and being leader, that means he's going to stick around for a while and he's going to be the last to go down. He still has a default of two reds. Pretty potent. Um, and the courage the courage and coordinate entries uh, cannot be denied. So it really looks like um, we're kind of getting to a funny space where Imperials are leaning more into being coordinate, which could make sense. And he's got two reds. That's nothing to sneeze at. Uh, God, put him on... Put him on vanilla stormtroopers because what stormtroopers are surge hit because they have whites normally and are snowtroopers also surge to hit? Yeah, they are. Um, actually, that's a good question. I should know this. Are all okay? So stormtroopers aren't surge to hit. Um, but put him on snow or stormtroopers and they get courage increase. Sorry, my mic my mic stands creaking a little as I'm adjusting it. Um, they get a courage increase. They get a coordinate. Oh, and they get two red attack dice with surge. At their normal range. Um, so this is really going to switch shit up. Like, on the one hand, these guys may actually be a pretty interesting and efficient Special Forces unit who will 
uh, go well with Aiden, who has special forces support, right? Like, depending on their base cost, they may be a better pairing for her than Death Troopers, though Death Troopers are obviously worth a lot. But also, with the way Dell and Gideon can kind of pop up in places, you might be able to do some serious shenanigans about reinforcing your basic army. Heck, even if you don't include Aiden, um, putting Dell in there so you can get basically a fourth sniper rifle, um, or using Gideon as a coordinating officer... There's a lot of interesting potential here. I really like what they're doing with this. Um, and we'll see if it kind of shakes up what Imperials are doing. Obviously, you may just go, I'm just going to stick them on more shores. And we'll see how that works. But I think it may breathe new life into older core units that are not as used anymore. Because, like I said, dude, that's steady with Dell. That's real nasty. Steady sniper rifles. Oof. That's probably why he's got lethal one, right? Why he doesn't just straight up have Pierce one. Because it... It would be very bad if he got that all the time, because he can do some very efficiency things. Um, now, some people, I have heard some complaints, of like, why isn't Gideon a commander? Listen, first of all, um, I believe they said the default unit leader for um, Inferno Squad slash Special Forces is supposed to be the fourth Inferno Squad member who died in the prequel novel, which is said about the time of Rogue One. Um, so that should probably give you your timeline. But also, hey, if, uh, if Imperials get Commander Gideon, that also means Rebels need to get... Um, Aiden and Dell versions of their own, so don't be too hasty. Though, um, if they did such a pack and that came with a Shriv Sergev uh, model, I might, I don't play Rebel, but I might buy that just so I can paint that model and he can snarkily sit on top of my PC. Oh, God, I love Shriv. He's the best. Best part of that game, hands down. Um, but I don't think there's much else to talk about with Imperial Special Forces. I think they're going to do interesting things. Um, the question will basically be... They're going to be competing probably with Death Troopers, so we'll have to see how they shake up to that and what special qualities they do with Aiden if they have better synergy. Um, because um, they do very different things than... Um, well, okay, you could, depending on what their size is, you could use one Inferno Squad team to sub for a Sniper Strike team with Dell. Like, that could be a thing you do. Um, but generally, I think they're competing with Death Troopers because they are probably going to be a quote-unquote elite infantry unit as opposed to, say, royal guards who are guardians and can hit people. And, uh, you know, they're, they're melee uh, blockers and bodyguards. And um, nobody really likes sc scout troopers for some reason. Eh. It's probably because everybody in the community is allergic to white saves. You, sh you show me a guy with a white armor, s armor save, I'll show it at a guy, he'll, like, explode into fire like a vampire. Unless he's a separatist, in which case he just goes, okay then. Um, that's how we test for separatists. It's like, Testing to see if you're a witch. Anyway, uh, so I think they're going to be primarily competing with Death Troopers, basically. And possibly will fit better with um, Aiden than Death Troopers would. M what do I think Mandalors are going to be? Unfortunately, Mandalords are probably going to compete with Wookiees, which is bad because Wookiees are not in a good place right now. They probably need some more point adjustments or something. Possibly they need an errata, much like the uh, the airspeeder got to give them another keyword or something. Because um, Wookiees are also white save. They're very chunky, but they're still white saves. And I'm guessing because they're unhindered and expert climbers and stuff, they're supposed to be that you just use cover and line of sight blockers while you advance on the enemy. Um, but Mandos are probably going to get jump, and they're probably going to have some pretty gnarly melee attacks, so that is unfortunately going to be kind of, I think, where the competition ends up. Um, because they will not they will not outright compete with strike teams um, on their own, but they can do some very nasty stuff with their jetpack rockets and also still have a close quarters option. We'll see how it shakes out. All right, let's finally talk about those battlefield cards. All right, so the battle cards from Vital Assets. Um, we're not gonna go super in depth. Like, I'm not gonna exp explore the whole supply deck to you, for instance, and we won't do in depth card skill analysis because um, you've probably got those already from other places. But we'll we'll in brief cover all of them. And I think the first thing to raise, which is a point that was raised, um, I think I first heard it from Notorious Scoundrels, is that combined with priority supplies, we now have a possibility to fully replace the um, battle cards from the core book. And this means that because you can only pick four, you are, before you start, um, the blue player is completely eliminating half the possible battle cards. So um, you're going to see a lot more nuance with the battle deck now and a lot more people building towards what suits them. And I hope to God everybody throws out clear conditions. Uh, boycott clear conditions. It should be banned from tournaments. It should be banned from casual play. And, uh, quite frankly, it should never have existed at all. But I understand why you made it, you know, you don't want to freak people out or whatever. It's still dumb. It does nothing. It literally does nothing. Its effect is that nothing happens. That's boring. 
and dumb. Um, so the deployments are pretty basic. Well, okay, they're not necessarily basic, but they are uh, pretty self-explanatory. You've got hemmed in. Um, now, you may wonder, why would I want to do this? So this is an asymmetric um, sort of um, deployment where the two sides do not necessarily deploy in the same manner. A uh, red player has to deploy in two separate blobs with um, blue um, on the lower long edge of the board, but in the center. Um, depending on your objective choice, this can mean that you could do some very ballsy plays as blue. Um, you could go straight for a middle position if it's got something, because there are some objectives which are supposed to be placed closer to the middle of the board. Um, and in general, even without that special advantage, it forces red to split themselves into two teams, um, or just completely abandon a side. Like, it's not like a disarray where you have to put something in both deployment zones, but it does mean that you either have to split your force or you have to completely abandon a side, which can be rough. Um, especially with stuff like Scout, this can do some very shenanigans and things. Keep it in mind. Uh, Danger Close uh, is kind of like advanced positions, but with no Scout, but it's very advanced. So you've got a very, a very tiny, teeny, tiny, thin kind of around the things and going around the long edges. Um, this means that because there's only range 3 between the far tips of your two deployment zones, um, one, you can get some very advanced positions, you know, regardless of Scout. Uh, extraneously, but especially if you do have scout. Um, Rebel and clone armies that use a lot of scout are going to love this. Um, you're already at range 3 minimum from your opponent. Um, if you can fit enough guys into that long arm on the on the long arm sides that extend out, um, they're going to be pretty close to the enemy, so you can get right up on them very early. Um, almost like how you can use infiltrate units. Like, uh, you put some ATRTs with flamers up there. Oh god, especially the clone one with scout 1. Um, you could be attacking your opponent's deployment zone right away. This is very scary for certain objectives which want you to get in the deployment zone. And just in general, be very, very scary. Watch out for this one if you're not prepared for, like, a close quarters fight. Also, again, um, makes close quarter fighting better. This is going to really help B2s and fleets and other close-up options. Uh, and then we've got rollout. You have two big L-shaped blocks, but... Um, you may deploy vehicles within range one of the flammy deployment zone. So you, so this doesn't necessarily work with bombing run, which is also vehicle friendly. Uh, we'll explain why in a second. But this does help vehicles because your vehicle units can get a little advanced. Um, so you can deploy staps, uh, or speeder bikes up ahead, or you can deploy slow vehicle units, um, like Doritikas or etc. Um, a little ahead, you can deploy tanks kind of as a front screen. Like, imagine sticking out your a your AAT out of your zone, or your ATSD. Um, and that can be pretty scary for your opponent. A lot of vehicle support in this. Um, so that's your, your basic level of the deployments. I expect you'll see a few of these a couple of times, depending on your opponent's list. So we've got three new objectives. The first I mentioned before is Bombing Run. After deployment, uh, deploy unit step, starting with a blue player, each player places three claimed objective tokens in base contact with friendly unit leaders that are within your deployment zone. Each unit cannot have more than one claimed token. Each trooper unit gains claim. All units gain drop. So basically, you can claim a token or you can drop a token. Dropping is a free action. At the end of the activation phase, each player may detonate one unclaimed objective token. Um, or that was flipped to its unclaimed side by drop. Um, when it detonates, this has surge crit, three reds. It's an area attack with range one. Blast and suppressive. Uh... And victory points, every objective token detonated within range 1 of a player's deployment zone, you get a dodge token. Or a victory token, I should say. Sorry. Um, so first off, only troopers can pick up a bomb that is dropped, but vehicles can put a bomb on. Uh, this makes speeder bikes, staps, air speeders very scary. Um, do danger close bombing run with an air speeder. Uh, that guy's gonna zoop zoop, you know, move. Move compulsory possibly move again to drop, dropping is a free action, and then move out of the way. Or not even, who cares? You don't have to. You can just triple move because you've got immune to range one weapons, um, which counts. So, first of all, that's a very very interesting soft uh, T-47 buff. Uh, if you want to make that work, one or two T-47s um, with, a, with a sizable bid and try and get bombing run, uh, because that's the thing, it becomes an offensive. 
because it's three reds with Blast Suppressive and Surge Crit. That's going to be a pretty nasty hit. That's going to weaken some units. Um, overall, this definitely... This is like... Uh, I think somebody described it as Nasty Breakthrough. Um, there are basically... I think there's basically like three fundamental objective types. Um, there is interact with a piece of terrain, whether that's like key positions, intercept, whatever. There is get stuff to your opponent's deployment zone, whether that's breakthrough, hostage, or, uh, uh, yeah, or, uh, you know, bombing run. And then there's get stuff back to your deployment zone, like hostage exchange. So, uh, bombing run, pretty nasty, uh, very useful. I think you'll see it a few times too with high speed, uh, Whatever. Um, hostage exchange. You So you tr pick a core unit. Um, your opponent uh, places your core unit in as near as possible to the center of the board and performs a speed one move. Then each player places an acclaimed objective token in contact with that unit leader. Equip the hostage upgrade card. During round one, you can't detonate. Um, and it says on the hostage card, during that round, you gain immunity to enemy effects. All trooper units get claim. And then victory, each player gains one victory point for each objective token that is claimed by a unit they control. And then if they're in your deployment zone, you gain another one. So basically, it's capture the flag kind of thing. You want to keep the ball, and you want to, at best, put the ball in your uh, your deployment zone. So if you can capture both um, and not get them back to a, your deployment zone, you can win. Or if you can just get one back to your deployment zone and keep your opponent from getting it to theirs, you can win. Um, very interesting effect, I think, because of the mobility and the the kind of immunity thing. This is going to play very well to fast attack armies, infiltrators, you know. Uh, lots of fun stuff there. And then last we've got payload. So you set a bomb cart within the deployment zone. Each player controls the bomb cart. Uh, they place. Starting with the blue player, each player marks a piece of terrain by placing one objective token on it. And then they can't uh, be within a deployment zone, but can't overlap. At the end of each round, each player um, may uh, pivot and perform a speed to move if there are no uh, more, if there are more, sorry, friendly unit leaders and then uh, enemy unit leaders at range one. And then basically you can get to their bomb space. So this is literally a an Overwatch game mode. Push the cart. Um, or technically, I don't know. Who does, did Team Fortress 2 do double carts? I don't remember. Um, there's technically two carts, but still, it's the same effect. You want to escort your bomb. You want to uh, not escort the enemy's bomb. You want to be careful about your placement because the enemy gets to put the terrain, um, gets to pick where your your goal is. Uh, still, can be very useful for certain things, and very fun. Uh, then we've got the three condition cards: supply drop. Basically, you put supply tokens on the field. You can pick them up. These can give you stuff like the ability to gain a dodge token, to gain an aim token, the ability to get marksman. Um, you can get scale for a single action. Um, you can get low profile, you can get the ability to basically transform into a heal droid or a repair droid, like you can get repair one, capacity one, and heal one, treat rather, uh, one, capacity one kind of stuff. And um, you can mine each one twice because you flip it and then you remove it. And resupplying is a free action, so um, this is very interesting, you have to be careful obviously about your opponent picking them, but still, it's a pretty fun one. Uh, you can get fortified positions. This is just like the one from Skirmish. You place uh, uh, a total of eight barricades, I think it is. Sorry, my How do I zoom in here? Can I give me a zoomo? Can I get a zoom? There you go. Eight barricades, yes. Sorry, I had to zoom in on my slide. Um, and then they have to be either inside the deployment zone or range one to two. They must be placed horizontally, which means you have to you have to place them flat on the ground. You cannot place them, like, tilted forward. You cannot place them tilted on their side so they stand vertically. Don't shrink any against them. Place them flat and horizontal. Um, this is a great one. Everybody bitches about cover. Now, obviously, um, barricades are not line of sight blockers, but barricades are heavy cover for troopers. So they don't necessarily help you if you have, like, low profile, but they can help other units where you're like, oh, man, clearly you need some cover. Um, I hope this becomes the standard default just because it's purely additive to the game. And... Presumably, if you're worried about your opponent getting heavy cover, you would plan appropriately with stuff like Critical. Last one, War Weary. I mentioned this before. This is going to be a fucker. Um, when checking whether a unit's panicked, the target, uh, the range at which your friendly commander's courage counts is reduced by 2 to a minimum of 1. So normally, 1. Because uh, it's range 3 normally. Uh, this means that... Uh, enemy 1. Uh, units where your commanders fuck off and go somewhere. And not helpful. Um, units with low courage, 
you're you're in a bad way. Um, so this is going to be really nasty to certain low courage armies. Droids don't like this. Um, yes, you don't have to worry about suppression, but this is based on panic. Your commanders tend to be low, like Grievous is only courage too, right? So he's got to stay very close to your droids if you want to do that. Um, this may hurt your co- if you're doing a lot of big spread for coordinate chains that might hurt you. Um, Imperials don't like this because their cheaper commanders that they tend to use tend to have lower courage values. Anyway, and this further decreases the bubble effect. Um, units that have lots of extra courage or have lots of rally effects like, oh, I don't know, rebels? They love this. Um, I think clones also have a bad time just because they have problems with suppression anyway. Uh, hopefully they can get some some help for that. But yeah, um, this is... If you want to do some fancy pants rebel stuff, like, load up your, your list with... Load up your list with rally and high courage units, and just go to town. You will, you'll, you will fuck some enemies up with just, just if you can play warrior. And that's all of our vital assets cards for today. All right, we are finally at the end. The outro. I warned you it was going to be long, um, but there's a lot of good news in here. So overall, other than you know, obviously real life stuff and delays, I think the game is in a very healthy place. We're doing a lot of interesting things. We will have to see fully, you know, what the core base effects of Mandos and uh, Infernos are. Like, obviously, we need to see their core unit cards before we can really start speculating, but um, I think both units are doing some interesting and diverse things for their factions and for the game, so they will probably do a lot of fun stuff. I think that the ATRT and the Stap Riders will also do some fun stuff for their factions, and uh, hopefully, you know, uh, switch up maybe what you feel like you need with your supports, give you the stuff. Uh, Vital Assets, I think, overall has a huge, huge impact on the game and just battle deck creation and curation. Um, And a lot of them do really interesting things. So, yeah, there's not much else to talk about there. I will obviously keep you apprised with further Legion news. There should be previews for some of this stuff eventually, though I don't know if... I don't know if the whole we're delaying the releases means we're also going to push back, like, news and articles about them. I don't know. Um, So you just have to see. Uh, Otherwise, stay tuned. We will be sure to hit more Legion news when it happens. Uh, At this point, we're probably not, because uh, everything's being pushed back basically a month, we're probably not going to hear any new, any new, new announcement news because some of this stuff's already, you know, already, already like three or four, um, or possibly now four to five months down the line, as it were. So we probably won't see new announcements for a little bit. They did say that they're planning on at least unveiling whatever they mean by there will be Mandalorian content in Legion by the end of the year. Though, again, I don't know if that accounts for delays and stuff. Um, They'll probably not be releasing this year, but that sounds like that's going to be the big marketing push is whatever is going on Mando-related is going to at least get announced. Uh, But we will continue to see. Everybody make sure to stay safe and stay inside. Hopefully you've got some minis to paint or something. Though uh, FFG did recommend Legion as a great game to play quarantine, you can play it with two people, or you can just buy a. I think they said like you know, for like fifty bucks, you can buy a, most unit expansions and a paint set and just paint them. You know, if you need something to do by yourself, which was pretty funny. Oh uh, yeah, okay, I think that's everything. We'll talk about all the all the news. All the, yeah, uh, I will say also, hey, if you want more of us and you want more of us in long uh, periods, be sure to not only check out other Legion videos we've done, but uh, also check out our actual play series. We're uh, 11 posted episodes in. The 12th is already in the hopper. It just needs to get, you know, finish editing and uploading and scheduling. Um, but it was recorded. Uh, for our Clone Wars campaign, using Fantasy Flight o- Fantasy Flight's o- own... Fuck, I can't say that right. Fantasy Flight's own Star Wars RPG, but they're Clone Wars supplements. Um, the last couple sessions have involved investigating drug cults, but also there's war and stuff in there. It's fun. It's real fun. Check it out. Great entertainment. Great thing to just put on in the background while you're painting. I don't know. Something like that. You know what you're doing. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's get out of here before this this video goes on even more millennia. So, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section down below. You can also hit up our Discord. The link is on our channel page and in the description, as always. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new here and haven't already, so you can always get our latest videos about Legion, about anything else. And don't forget to hit, hit that bell for notifications, even if you're already subscribed. So you always know when we post a new video or when we stream or anything like that. It's real handy. And, of course, like it says at the front of the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You get access to episodes early. It really helps us out. Uh, I know that can be a little bit of an ask in these trying times, but also, you know, they're trying times for everybody. So uh, consider helping us out. 100% do not spend it on minis and paint. That's not a lie. It's not even a joke. That's true. Uh, okay. Well, I'll let you guys go. I'll be sure to be seeing you in future videos. And uh, so I guess I need to yell for you to watch those backpack rockets, right? Hey.